Yeah, dexamethasone has a lot of functions, and it really uh, comes back to how it works through some of these stress hormone pathways. So dexamethasone is, in essence, a synthetic version of cortisol, and it works through a lot of the same pathways that cortisol does in the body. And so we chose to use it because of its ability to impact a whole range of different systems in the body that would, you know, knock inflammation down for better sense, less cytokine release, probably less acute phase protein release, but still mimicking a lot of what happens during an immune challenge, because there are a lot of things outside of just inflammatory mediator release when an animal has an, a stress response. Everybody, welcome to the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, brought to you by Wisenetics. I'm Todd Calloway, and I am dedicated to bringing you the latest insights and discussions in the field of dairy nutrition. So, thank you very much for listening, and get ready to expand your knowledge and stay ahead of what's going on with today's episode. So today we have Galen Combs, who's a graduate student with Iowa State University, Department of Animal Science. So welcome, Galen. It's good to talk to you again. And would you mind telling everybody a little bit about you, how you got where you are and some of what led you to being a grad student in animal sciences? Yeah, thank you, Todd. Um, as said, I'm, I'm Galen Combs. I've been here at Iowa State uh, working on my PhD with Lance Baumgard for about three years. And I uh, am the first generation off the farm. So I, I didn't really grow up with a dairy background, but I always enjoyed raising animals for the county fair and things like that and enjoyed the nutrition aspect of it. So going to college, studying and found my way figuring out that I really like how nutrition interacts with health and specifically how it affects for animals. And so um with that, I ended up joining Lance's lab to study exactly that and been, you know, a great relationship built ever since. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your fee with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Okay, well, those of us that know Lance, you know, you have our sympathies of working with him, but he's a great guy, one of the best scientists in the field. So, you know, just don't ever tell him I said that. But we're very glad to have you. So you've got some really interesting work that you just presented at the American Dairy Science Association meeting on and the title of dexamethasone pretreatment on metabolism and productivity following a immune challenge. And that really strikes us as important because there's a lot of discussion on inflammation in the industry. So will you tell us about what your research was, what it means? Yeah, it's a great question. And uh, for those who don't know what the Baumgard Lab is, is really studying, we study how stress impacts productivity in animals and really how stress can ultimately affect the way that the gut is um, able to keep pathogens out while still doing its job of bringing nutrients in and, and how those nutrients are used for productive purposes. And so with that, in the context of inflammation, uh, inflammation has been a marker to see how well those animals are adjusting in difficult times, whether it be the transition period to bouts of heat or anything like that. And currently it seems that a lot of the current thought is based on, well, how much inflammation is there and how much inflammation can we have before it seems that there are associations with poor productivity, less milk yield, less intake and things like that. And some of our research over the past few years has started to question, is that relationship as strong as maybe we think? And so this project, um, like you said, was looking at how do we take away the inflammatory aspect of an acute immune challenge and what happens if we take that inflammation away. So what drew your interest to using, of all things, dexamethasone? You know, we already know that's somewhat of an anti-inflammatory. It's not, you know, on that 
I always think of Dex as being um, used in like high altitude sickness and basically to simulate stress in a lot of ways or attenuate some stress. So why did you decide to use that? Yeah, dexamethasone has a lot of functions, and it really uh, comes back to how it works through some of these stress hormone pathways. So dexamethasone is, in essence, a synthetic version of cortisol, and it works through a lot of the same pathways that cortisol does in the body. And so we chose to use it because of its ability to impact a whole range of different systems in the body that would you know, knock inflammation down for better sense, less cytokine release, probably less acute phase protein release, but still mimicking a lot of what happens during an immune challenge, because there are a lot of things outside of just inflammatory mediator release when an animal has in a stress response. There's a change in the amount of cortisol she secretes. There's a decrease in calcium. There's these other impacts to metabolism that in part, involves stress hormones. So we, we wanted to ask the question, well, we have the inflammation piece taken out with dexamethasone, but we still have the stress hormone piece and we still have the LPS directly in circulation, which is uh, an antigenic molecule. What happens then without that one piece of the puzzle? So that's where we ended up. And for how we ended up challenging these animals, we ended up trying to use uh, LPS as our model. And while that's maybe not something that happens on farm every single day, why we use it is that it's a very repeatable and reliable model to see exactly when an animal can get sick and how we can mimic that systematically. Okay. So can you walk me through what you guys did and what responses you saw that you know are really going to kind of at least lead us to some of our new thinking on inflammation? So what we did is, and this is a very common model that our group uses, we collected baseline data for four days on, on these animals. And then at the start of what's called period two or a challenge period, we gave all animals a dose of LPS. So we gave them enough LPS that based on our previous models, they we knew they'd feel sick and have a decrease in, in milk yield and feed intake for a few days. LPS is the lipopolysaccharide, right? LPS is the antigenic piece of gram negative bacteria. We know that it responds and immune cells will respond to it and secrete a lot of the inflammatory meteors that make animals feel sick. And eight hours before they got that LPS, they either were given a treatment of dexamethasone to, in theory, knock down the inflammation, or they were given saline as a control. And we followed them for seven days after that LPS response. And really the big takeaway that we had from this is that all animals seem to have um, some degree of fever post LPS, which is expected. Uh, fever is a very common piece of the inflammatory puzzle. And all animals, no matter if they had dexamethasone or not, decreased in milk and feed intake, which was intriguing to us because we would have anticipated that if you eliminate inflammation, you'd also eliminate that uh, drag on a productive phenotype. Some of the other changes that we we noticed was that our our model did exactly what we anticipated it to. It completely got rid of uh, what's called a cytokine response or some of the immediate markers of immune cells being activated, and it seemed to severely blunt the amount of acute phase protein release, showing again that dexamethasone does have impacts on tamping down an, an inflammatory response. But we always circled back to that idea of Still, without that inflammation, animals still had the characteristic decrease in productivity following an LPS challenge. And so that, that really uh, had us asking the question, why? You know, what is going on that could give us some insight into why these animals still didn't have a phenotype that supported what we saw in the inflammatory data? So it seems to have a lot more drive on that acute phase response rather than that longer term response. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing that we are still piecing through what this all means in the context of transition cow biology, stress biology, and, and things like that. Um, as a group, we, we understand that inflammation is incredibly important for healthy phenotypes as well as sick phenotypes. I mean, all animals seemingly after calving have an inflammatory response. And if we block that with anti-inflammatory drugs, either as NSAIDs or steroidal drugs like dexamethasone, 
we seem to interfere with that process, interfere with uterine involution or, or related sterile sources of inflammation. When we take out that inflammatory piece during a challenge model, though, what does that mean in terms of overall biology changing? We don't know for sure. But I think in total, it gives us some insight that agrees with the idea that inflammation is one of the key responses that we have to the immune system being revved up and being activated. But it's not the only piece. It's one of several different pieces. And, and us as a group want to elicit the idea that measuring inflammation is great. Measuring inflammation to know how that animal is responding to a challenge is great. But we have to take it in context that there's a whole bunch of other things going on at the same time. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Verdius Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting that... You know, not all inflammation is bad. We tend to try to lump things, you know, we bend things as good or bad, and inflammation is often seen as that. But in the past few years, there's been a lot more of not all inflammation is the same. There's some good, some bad. So that's always interesting. So what's your take-home message for the real-world nutritionist out there on these effects of inflammation? For the real-world application of some of this this take home data, um, we have to take home the idea that that inflammation is a part of this complex of immune activation. And so, we, as a group, we try to typically take home the idea that immune activation and inflammation may not be the same exact piece. Immune activation is, in essence, the whole pie. It's all of the changes in terms of mineral metabolism, in terms of stress hormone release, in terms of uh, energetic metabolism, as well as release of inflammatory mediators that ultimately culminate in how that animal responds to a stressor. And inflammation is that immune component of it, how animals will secrete things that will in effect control a pathogen release or pathogen load in the body or how they coordinate through other organs like the liver to make sure that this, this insult is contained. And so in terms of the practicing nutritionist, we have to think in context of maybe inflammation is a good marker for us and is a good thing for us to consider how we are going to um, measure what's going on in our cows. But it's not necessarily the only piece of that pie. And so for how we want to control inflammation and control immune activation on farm, well, it's very easy to say um, – we want to control inflammation. Ultimately, that means to rescue a lot of these uh, drags on milk yield or productivity. We have to go back and see what's causing them in the first place. Maybe it's overcrowding in one of our pens, or maybe it's we don't have adequate heat abatement, or our cows are stressed psychologically. All of these things can cause more of that stress component that ultimately leads to a poor phenotype. And if we're just controlling for the inflammatory piece, maybe we're not finding the right problem. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. And thank you very much for your time today. We really appreciate you sharing your research with us. So with that, that's going to conclude another episode of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast presented by Wisenetics. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay, stay updated on future episodes. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. Your feedback really helps us pick out who's going to speak next and who's going to present information that's of interest to you. So until next time, this is Todd Calloway from the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast signing off. Thank you all. <laughs>